This is Bob Oliphant from the Westford Historical Society and Museum bringing you episode 35 of season 3 of the Westford Wardsman podcast. The Westford Wardsman newspaper was part of Turner's Public Spirit, a weekly newspaper in air a century ago. In this episode, we'll be reading the Wardsman for the week ending Saturday, August 27, 1910, and I'll elaborate on what was happening in Westford that week. The week starts with the Westford Center section. Word has been received from Mr. and Mrs. Winthrop W. Sargent of the advent of a little daughter in their California home. Mrs. Sargent was formerly Miss Gretchen Kebler of this town. Miss Fanny Bickford of Shelton, Connecticut, has been the guest this week of Mrs. John B. Fletcher. Miss Bickford is the only daughter of one of the former pastors at the Congregational Church. Uh, that was Augusta Bickford, who was pastor from 1890 to 1896. She is now one of the teachers at Wilbraham Academy, where she was formerly a student. Miss Jenny Chandler was an automobile guest of the Abile Abbots last week, Saturday, in attendance at the historical pageant at Peterborough, New Hampshire, which was a most enjoyable and unique event. Master Stephen Maloney met with quite a serious accident on Monday while playing with a toy automobile. This automobile is of home construction by the boys of the neighborhood and used wherever there is a stretch of downgrade. The boy received a bad gash on one leg and Dr. Blaney took a number of stitches and otherwise made the little fellow comfortable. Stevie is a popular little four-year-old and his many friends wish him a speedy recovery. Mr. and Mrs. John P. Wright with Francis and Alice are at the log cabin on Prospect Hill for a fortnight's stay. This house was, was located uh, near the t uh, town water tower on Prospect Hill, uh, which is the hill that looks over Prospect Hill where the center of Westford lies. Mrs. E. H. Shelton of South Lake Weir and, and Jacksonville, Florida, was the guest for several days of Mr. and Mrs. Austin H. Foss. The three weeks vacation at the Congregational Church is over, and all the regular services will be resumed on Sunday. Arthur E. Day conducted the evening service last Sunday. These evening services have been well sustained during the vacation. Miss Mary J. Davis was in the village Tuesday calling on old friends. Miss Davis is visiting at Mrs. Frank C. Hildreth's. Mr. and Mrs. Oscar R. Spaulding are enjoying a vacation at various interesting points in Maine with headquarters at Portland. Camp life on the shores of Forge Pond this season is in full swing and being fully enjoyed. There are about 36 camps in all, and nearly everyone at the present time is open and occupied, which makes quite a colony. The Westford contingent of camp owners is fully represented. Workmen have been busy this week putting into place the beautiful new memorial window given by Colonel Metcalf in memory of his mother at the Unitarian Church. Mrs. Arthur E. Day and children are unfortunately having a siege with a whooping cough. Workmen are still engaged at the Whitney Park edging walks and drives and other finishing jobs. The next paragraph is called A, a Sad Happening. In addition to the sadness and suddenness of Mrs. Mary E. Brigham's illness and death at her home in Somerville last week was another sad happening of interest to Westford people. Since the late Mrs. Brigham had suffered seriously with impending loss of sight, Mrs. Kendall Wright, who was a Westford woman and contemporaneous with Mrs. Brigham in age and taste, had lived with her as companion. In the interval between Mrs. Brigham's death and burial, Mrs. Wright was stricken with a severe pulmonary hemorrhage. Everything, was, everything possible was done for Mrs. Wright. A trained nurse is in attendance. She was unable to be removed from the house. The last report was that she was quite comfortable. Pearly E. Wright of this town is her only son. Grange is the next section. There was a good summer meeting of the Grange last Wednesday evening. Mrs. Joseph E. Knight, who was Mrs. Grieg's substitute for the summer, had arranged a good program which was well carried off. 
The question for discussion was, how far should Massachusetts women be given the ballot? What extent should they vote in town affairs? Certainly no claim was made of deciding or settling so vital or important a question, but the debate was well supported and many ideas on the different phases of the question were brought out. The program was supplemented with music by the Grange Orchestra, singing by a quartet composed of Mr. and Mrs. Alonzo H. Sutherland, Mrs. David L. Grieg, and Edson G. Boynton, and piano solo by Miss Grace Robinson. Notice was read by the secretary of the meeting of the North Middlesex Pomona Grange in Lowell, Friday, September 2nd, and of the Grange Fair at Billerica, September 15th and 16th. The next section is the About Town section. In a six-seated auto of 18 individual capacity, Mr. and Mrs. Wright and friends of Deerfield gathered in the hospitality of the Walker Homestead last Sunday. Charles E. and Miss Bell Walker always have the lookout welcome, come right in, quote, come right in, end quote, at this old abiding place. One wonders what the uh, make of the six-seated auto of 18 individual capacity was. Miss Alice Hedstrom of Boston is taking on the ways of the rustic among the berries and apples and farm scenery at the Eben Prescott acreage, Chamberlain Corner. Um, the Prescotts lived just east of Chamberlain's Corner on uh, Main Street headed towards Chelmsford on the right-hand side. Mr. and Mrs. Fred A. Snow celebrated the fifth anniversary Tuesday of Abiding Unity when law and custom changed the name of Esther Perry Taylor, who was Samuel Taylor's daughter, he's the author of the About Town section that we're reading, to Snowbound. That's a play on her new husband's name, Fred Snow. An earthquake shock shook up the Merrimack River Valley Sunday about 1.40 p.m. And while at it, the Stony Brook and Tadmuck River Valleys were also responsive to the disturbance as far west as Great Tadmuck Hill, where Westford Center has builded itself an abiding place. The disturbance resembled the explosion of the Lowell Cartridge Company a few years ago. It appeared, however, to be subterranean rather than an airship collision. Uh, the United States Cartridge Company explosion occurred on July 29, 1903, in what is today Lowell, uh, but at that time it was part of Tewksbury. There's a, a good uh, Wikipedia, Wikipedia article about that explosion. The Herbert E. Fletcher Company are widening the railroad bridge on the branch line at the junction of Sawmill Middle, Meadow Brook and the outlet of Nabnasset Pond. This is made necessary by the increased volume of water resulting from the flowage uh, of Namnasset Pond by the improvements of George C. Moore. A.P. Corey has relinquished, relinquished his aptitude for work at the Henry B. Reed Farm and returned to his farm in Maine. After the usual summer vacation, Middlesex North Pomona Grange will hold its first autumn meeting next Friday at Oddfellows Hall, Bridge Street, Lowell. Word has just been received in town of the death in Maine of Mrs. Mary, wife of Dr. James Frederick Smith, who for several years was a practicing physician in Westford. Mrs. Smith will be remembered as Mary Tower, being one of the nine daughters of Eli Tower, one of the substantial farmers in the Stony Brook Valley. She was one of the bright scholars of the old Stony Brook School and of Westford Academy. The recent dinner given by the men of the Unitarian Church for Troop F Cavalry netted about $100. Andrew Talent of Pelham, New Hampshire, has been visiting in Westford. Mrs. Adeline Parfit, her maiden name was Talent, and she was uh, Andrew's sister, at Chamberlain's Corner. Forge Village is the next section. Little Thomas Finn, the three-year-old son of Mr. and Mrs. Thomas Finn of Pond Street, came with an, within an inch of losing his life Sunday evening about six o'clock. The little fellow, in the absence of other members of his family, secured a bottle of iodine and almost emptied the contents before he was discovered. 
he was given an emetic, and Dr. Warren H. Sherman was hastily summoned and was on the scene in a few minutes and used the stomach pump with good results. The little fellow is out of danger and will be around playing in a short time. Mrs. Ernest Myers and three children and their and three children of Lowell spent several days last week as the guests of her sister and brother-in-law, Mr. and Mrs. Henry Cashpole. Ernest Myers spent Sunday with them, returning with his family in the evening. Miss Eva Shepherd of Lowell spent Sunday with Mr. and Mrs. Henry Cashpole. John W. and Miss Emily Catchpole, who was John's sister, and Miss Evelyn Fernald were guests Sunday of Mr. and Mrs. Mrs. Joseph Mason of Lowell. William Lee of Boston, Herbert Sprague, Daniel O'Keefe, and Ned Coughlin of Cambridge are enjoying camp life on the shore of Forge Pond. They were entertained at tea Sunday by Mr. and Mrs. James Wilson, who had as their guests Mrs. Frank Gard's Miss Minnie Mamie, Miss Mamie Dando, and Miss Mildred McDonald of South Boston, Miss Abby M. Blaisdell of Wamaset, and Master Lester Neville of Woburn. Miss Lizette Simpson of Boston has returned home after a pleasant visit spent with Mrs. Elizabeth Splain. Mr. and Mrs. William Kirk of Worcester are at Mr. and Mrs. Henry Cashpole's. Mr. and Mrs. George Rigby of North Chelmsford are spending this week at Hollingside Cottage on the shore of Forge Pond. Mr. and Mrs. Rigby spent a week at the pond earlier in the season and became fascinated with outdoor life. This week they are entertaining George Ryan of Lowell. Owners of smaller cottages report an excellent season. Every cottage is occupied and several tents are pitched at the Narrows. It is reported that several new cottages will be built around the lake during the coming fall. A large muster of men under the direction of James Sullivan have been engaged for several days in clearing the shore area of the pond at Cameron Grove. That's the little park behind Cameron School. Several seats have been arranged under the trees and the rubbish all raked up and the trees trimmed. This is a much needed improvement and is greatly appreciated by the public. All that is necessary now to make this grove an ideal place for outings and picnics are a few steps leading down to the shore of the lake as the embankment is very steep at this particular spot. The members of the John Edwards Hose Company have received their new bright red uniforms and are all ready for the annual Fireman's Field Day, which will be held in Graniteville Saturday. A check from the Abbott Worsted Company, received a short time ago, was greatly appreciated by the members. The check enabled them to secure the necessary articles of a fireman's outfit. Stephen Healy of Graniteville has accepted the position as Teamster for Abbott and Company and will move here with his family as soon as a house can be obtained. Abbott and Company is, of course, Abbott Worsted Company. Mrs. Michael Keefe, a maiden name Annie Precious, and little son David of Townsend Harbor visited her sister, Mrs. John Carmichael, nay Harriet Precious, Precious, on Tuesday. The Forge Village Tigers were defeated by the St. Mary's team last Saturday at Ayer by the score of 8-6. to six. This Saturday, the St. Mary's will play a return game at Cameron Grove. This was baseball, of course. A large number of young people enjoyed a trolley ride to, Cano Cano to Canopy Lake Park on Sunday. Reverend Harry Gray of Nevada preached his farewell sermon at St. Andrew's Mission last Sunday. Reverend Mr. Gray will leave shortly for the West, where he will resume his duties as pastor. St. Andrew's Parish is at this writing still without a vicar. The next uh, few pastors are a uh, few paragraphs are entitled Real Estate Sales. Edward T. Hanley has purchased the large double house on Central Street, which is now West Prescott Street, from Wilbert E. Parsons. A.W. Karkin, uh, I'm not sure whether that's uh, Augustus W. Karkin or his son, Alan W. Karkin, uh, 
has purchased the antique shop and 100 feet of land on Prescott Street from Mr. Parsons and intends to convert it into a modern dwelling. George E. Mountain has bought from Mr. Parsons a strip of land on Prescott Street. It is reported that Oscar A. Nelson of Graniteville has purchased some land from George Blodgett on Central Street and intends building an up-to-date residence the coming fall. Mr. Parsons came on here from the West to dispose of his real estate and will return shortly to Vancouver, Washington, where he and Mrs. Parsons intend to settle. Real estate is certainly booming in this village. The new Abbott Mill on Pleasant Street is all complete, and the machinery is being placed in it. This will give employment to a large number of people. There is need of more tenements. Although several have been built recently and new streets laid out, the demand is larger than the supply. Uh, the next uh, and last section is entitled Reunion. The descendants of Jonathan Smith Bennett of Groton, who settled in this country in the early part of the 17th century, held their annual reunion Saturday at the home of Mrs. Edith Bennett Whitt Whittemore of Worcester. Alvin S. Bennett and sisters, Mrs. Mary, e, Mary I. Drake and Mrs. Lucretia Reed of this village, were among the large number present. The day was pleasantly spent in renewing old acquaintances and talking over old times. A feature of the affair was the 20 rods race for the members of the first generation. This was won by Alvin S. Bennett of this village, who was 83 years old. Tables were set for four generations, 40 in number, each generation having a table to themselves. At the conclusion of the meal, a short musical program was given, and those present answered to the roll call. One death was recorded and one birth. Mrs. Bennett, wife of Dr. Harrison M. Bennett of Washington, D.C., having passed away during the summer. It was voted to hold the reunion in 1911 at the home of John Bennett of Worcester. And that's the news in Westford for the week ending August 27th, 1910. Thank you for listening, and thanks to Ryan Cousins of Westford Cat for providing technical support. You can find transcriptions and podcasts from the Wardsman at our website at museum.westford.org or visit the Historical Society's Facebook page for more Westford news from a century ago. This is Bob Oliphant, and I hope you will join us for next week's Westford Wardsman podcast. Thank you.